Thank you, the first strike. Spain to break. Right. Rolly Williams, anything to add to that? Um, I just love the way that they're best friends. I think that these guys are really gonna excel because they don't get mad at each other for a missed shot. Not that they miss shots often. Well, no corner ball from that that side there, and I think we saw a bit more of this in the last match where the ball started to sit a little funny. A lot of little groups, a lot of a lot of congestion at times, and a lot of different types of shots. Looks to me though he can pull the ball two rails right at the two ball. No? Alright. Looks okay to me anyways. You don't, you don't want to rip at this, Carl, but you can come into it at a, a fairly decent mild speed into that two ball. That way nothing terrible happens. One extension per rack. Extension. The very next shot after the break. Yeah, you know. Yeah, a little bit longer. That's often because the balls are more congested, and you might have to play a push out. That was a good shot. Yeah, and like I said, didn't really come into it with too much speed where something terrible could happen. It took a chance to get him open, but safe manner. Can you get the two around table, getting him behind the eight? And it looks like it. Well, that's got to go a little, the cue ball. Didn't want to leave this jump, probably. If it was the case for us, jump. It's got to be a jump, on it? Yeah, go for it. Shall I play it or you want to play it? You play it, you play it. I'll tell you, that's an interesting decision because if you remember, Imran buried like three big jump shots in this tournament so far. Yeah, but Chris Melling likes to sort of be the showman, if you like. This is right up his street. 30 seconds, plenty of time. Nail this jump shot, get this crowd going. However, he's missed it. But they've got away with it. They're having the run of the ball so far this week, especially against the A team. Things was just on a plate. And you do need it. But yeah, maybe that was an interesting decision. JJ, if Imran's made three jump shots, as you said. May go for this. Oh, wow, the pockets are definitely tightening up because that ball didn't even threaten going, and I thought it had a good chance when it left the cue ball. It's interesting because we've seen Spain be so defensive for the entirety of the tournament. They're kind of taking a little change, switching up their strategy. Yeah, and just kind of overhit that, made it kind of deflect off the two ball rather than going through it. And a bit of a tester here early on the three. Suppose if we look back at the jump shot by Chris, if Sanchez Ruiz would have got the cue ball tight on the eight, the jump shot wasn't there, was it? Which one big? Yeah, it's just a different part of the game these days. You have to consider the jump cue when you're playing safe. Well, that jump shot might not have been there, but that throw was there. Great Britain looks like they might just clinch this one. Now, if you're just joining us, a lot of people are familiar with Chris Melling. Because he made one of the most incredible runouts of all time, and it got like a hundred million views on YouTube. But not right now, because you're watching this, obviously. But when you get a chance, go look that up. Chris? 
Uh, a lot of pros consider it the greatest no. run out of all time. So 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 Melling is definitely if you can. a flashy character. Okay. Right, I'm going to get the snooker here. And of course, he was playing the cue ball at the bottom rail, but when you miss, you can't predict where the object ball is going to go. And it was perfect for Great Britain right there. Yeah, he nearly actually double kissed the, the seven ball, didn't it? Yeah, and that was a missable ball. A little heavy on the cue. Cue ball on position there from Chris. <laughs> Don't recall Spain trailing. Maybe they trailed in one of the matches early. I kind of think this may be the first time entire event that they trailed and Little light with the speed there, so I think can he kill the ball easily or does he have to go three rails? Oh, he can kill it. Yes, you can hear the crowd getting involved. We expected this. Right to death that one, right? Yeah, yeah. I had to use it because I didn't want to roll it because I got a kick, you know what I mean? I told that, hey, it was a bit thin, but I managed to hold it. So yeah. But that's why the shot didn't play in the middle. You've always got to play it that way. I'm just playing the cable there, yeah. yeah absolutely. You always got yeah, to play that anyway, yeah. It's a tough part. One thing that yeah. the vibe off him, man, he's really enjoyed his time here in this event, playing with Chris. He doesn't really look under pressure, he's kind of like almost happy to be here playing in the event, playing with Thank you, this second record. Great Britain to break. <coughs> Leading one. Yeah, they've kind of got a, a wrestling dynamic here where they're kind of, the, they keep saying they're going to eat the competition. And it's pretty funny. So the bush goes break off in rack two. Yeah, and the, another missed corner ball. So not only in this match, but looking forward to tomorrow with three huge matches to end our event. I'll tell you, the break may become a huge part of it. I might play this off the seven, huh? You're going to have a go at bank. Oh, what about the one off the seven have here? Have a go at bank. Carl? Yeah, I like it if it's there. You Chris, can draw the ball. Yeah, I mean, Chris would spot that more than anyone, so if he doesn't fancy it, fair enough. Chris hmm. is telling him to lock up behind so the five and just send the one long. Okay. That's an option. The eight well. makes the bank a huge ball, though, doesn't it? It's got to go. I'll tell you, I'm looking at that seven again. It seemed just hardly, you know, where it wasn't missable to play the one off the seven. A number of shots there, though. Yeah, there was three or four options. Regardless of which shot you decide to take on, you're still going to try and perform it, and we can chalk that one down as a mistake from Imran. But I suppose if he wanted to play the bank and Chris has talked him into the safety, it's not your natural instinct, is it? So this is a tough pot for Fran. Yeah, you 
just kind of feel like Spain's going to come with those long shots. So you got to be real tidy with the cue ball when it comes to the safety play. This looks a little tight. May have to go off the rail. Yeah, purposely played it into the rail. And watch the two. It still kind of talked to us a bit there at the pocket before it went in. So definitely, definitely the pocket starting to wear in a little bit. Well, they're making short work of this rack. David has a lot of experience here at the World Cup. He's played in all but one World Cup. Sanchez Ruiz has played in a gaggle of World Cups as well. They made it to the semifinals in 2019. It's in Spain. So, decent reply. It was a tricky opening one ball. But it was a bad safety from England. But let Spain get to the table in rack number two. That nine ball from David. David's been having a pretty good year. 2021 in the U.S. Open and he Carlo Diotto 11 to 5. Then beat Mark Mr. Bosch 11 8. Only to run into Carlo Biato again in the final 16. Lose Hill Hill. Carlo, of course, went on to win that tournament. So nice that this is a single elimination tournament instead of a double elimination so that David doesn't have to play anyone he's already beat. in 7-0 win over the A-team. It was an unusual result. We didn't expect it, but they played very solid indeed. And in the end, 7-3 probably doesn't really reflect how the match looked. But nevertheless, it was 7-3. And now this is a, a big test. The boys have switched the fan on. There's plenty of fans in tonight. At the Brentwood Centre in Essex. The only way is nine ball. Thank you, Lee, third rack. One apiece in Spain to break. Our first look at David Alcady to break the balls. seen these matches a lot today to where not a lot of shots produced after the break. A lot of situational pool, tactical plays, and another one here from Spain, which they excel at. As you know, the players want to stay aggressive, but very disciplined. I like to just go simply behind the three, I guess, but I would look at some other options maybe. <laughs> Oh, 
Dai, vai, 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 vai. Che mi dico io giù? Dica. Sì, che... Sempre fare una risposta, eh? Sembra buona pena. Yeah, simple high right ball here. The key to this ball is just hit it smooth and you should track behind the six, seven and eight very easily. Stay thick on it. You don't want the cue ball moving very fast. Yeah, like that. You want it slowly coming in in this position. And that's why I think I may have looked at a little different safety in that opening shot from Ruiz. I just thought there was maybe a little more he could have done. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, just gonna make sure I get some. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's fine. Extension. Extension call. Do you want to play with the band? Yes. What's going on with this band? It's dangerous. What do you prefer? Do you want to play with the band or play with the two? You're capable of playing with the band. Do you want to play with the band? Yes, okay. I think he goes for the long rail bank here. And trying to cut the one, playing the cue ball somewhere, pretty tough. Two ball, he's going to obstruct and run his cue in. But this is a chance. And I think a big, big shot for Imran getting started early in this match. Not only can they run out, so it's a touchy one. Yeah, it's not easy. Okay. This is the position where Spain have looked good in the opening two matches. All the balls in the open. Just connect the dots. One thing that's really put Spain on top is their consistency. A lot of teams have gotten a nice open look at a table and found a way to get behind a ball or get hooked or something. Spain seems to really play it clean, organized, and just sort it all out. May looking for him to play the six up long right here. Got a little flat here though, so we'll see. The problem is if you land here too, too close to the left rail, you're going away from the seven. So he wants to stay on the right hand side line of the six. Oh, this looks good. This looks very good. We can just roll the cue ball through now. Yeah, and that's a pretty good sign of comfort letting the stroke out going to the rail rather than trying to float into position, simplifying the shot on the five. And I wouldn't say totally off to the races yet, that being Spain, but time at the table makes them get tougher and tougher, it seems. Yeah, the two of these guys have had a lot of time on the main table. David Al Qaeda. 2017 won the World Pool Masters over Jason Shaw, then did it again in 2019 over Alex Kazakis of Greece. Team Spain wins the third. The numbers yet, it's the tricky one ball, it's led to the third rack, going to the way of Spain. Spain two, Great Britain one.
thank you to your fourth break. Team Spain to break. Leading in the match by two wrecks to one. Welcome back. This is our final quarter final. If you missed the match just before this, USA have made it through. They beat Switzerland. Switzerland have had a good tournament, but USA advanced through to the semi finals. Much to the delight of my co commentator, Double J. Yeah, very much so. And I think that's. Break is changing completely on this table. That's the second time no wing ball and now a dry break from that right rail. And you have to first. I don't know if Spain can really be stubborn about that. They may have to change sides. Got a minute, so just... Safety's a shot. Safety's a shot, yeah. You've got loads of cover around here, down here. Yeah? Yeah, I it. Hit it half ball and come down here. It's not half ball. What else do you see? I don't see anything else. Nothing attacking there. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the shot. Probably yeah, cut the, the one and run Perfect. the cue ball back behind the five, eight, and seven, maybe getting behind the nine. Something like that. Yeah, I think that's what has been discussed, and that is what has been attempted. Oh, just that little flick. Just a little flick there is, is gives Spain a bit of an easier path through to this one. Maybe they can see a slight edge, but if they can't. They can certainly yeah. do something off the top rail. I'll try and make sure that I got them. Yeah, they might the try and use yeah. that three and four on the side rail. Depending on how comfortable you are with this type of kick shot, you can come in behind it with a little right spin. Coast the cue ball over to the right rail. Actually, we have a few different options on the kick shot. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'm a, around a lot of Spanish speaking people in Texas, and this makes me better about things because I know these two aren't arguing. But I get around some, some back home that I know I kind of feel like they're arguing sometimes, and maybe they're not just discussing what's the shot. A lot of syllables per second, the language of Spanish. Ooh, they're going to be happy with this one. Yeah, and that's what that little flick on the five cost Team Great Britain there on that safety. Yeah, that's years of experience, JJ, isn't it? Battled hard and scars, you've been there. You've been around the block once or twice, JJ. Yeah, I thought I'd seen or done it all until... Ten seconds, Jim. Last Stand time I was in... Well, not last time I was in London, but last December and... I'm sure there's more to come. All I can do is hit it. Well, uh, David Al Qaeda of Spain has also been around the block in 2001. He was finally broke through to the World Nine Ball Championship, beating Alex Laley and Dimitri Jungo to reach the last 16 before losing to Jeremy Jones. Yeah, I remember that. I believe that was the year that Earl defeated Bustamante in the final, 17-15. I played about the worst match ever against Earl in the quarterfinals. <laughs> so, <laughs> played great until then. I think I ran eight racks against Thorson or something in the final 64. I can't remember exactly, but hard playing one of your heroes. We never got into battle, did we, JJ? No, not once. Lucky for you. Uh, maybe. I'm <laughs> just joking. You're a bit of fun, haven't you, Raleigh? Well, there's a table downstairs. After this, you guys could uh, fight it out for bragging rights. Yeah, we'll see. I want to try the English eight ball. I know that's his game. That game Carl. Soft, yeah, because you yeah. got good chance. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, the yeah, man at the playing. table, Chris Melling, has a lot of games. In 2014, he became the first person to be a pro snooker player and a pro pool player at the same time. This is going to go long. Oh, so. and so it's just that it. little nip on the on the, on the four. <laughs> now, I mean, I I probably try to break these out right here with the one. You know, just try and nudge something open with the two near. You got to be a little, you know. Have been a, a, a little careful doing so. But. Yeah, the 
Worst thing you could happen here is it just double kisses the three and nothing really happens, so he's got to get things moving. Yeah, I thought he would draw off the right side of it and come back for maybe the two on the side and let the three open up to the middle. I didn't, I didn't know if they would really open that well the way he went, but these guys are such good shot makers and very efficient with their mind, meaning he's going to come back for the cross side bank on the three. blows my mind that the pros will play for an intentional bank shot, but they're just that good. Yeah, and what helped David there is the way Sanchez got the cue ball perfect, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did, and these, these two piece it together well, and they're great players no matter what, but I really feel like these two are super tough when they get the lead. You know, a lot of teams we see are a little lopsided here and there. This team feels like it's two pretty equally strong players. They're really proven that by just working this cue ball wherever they want, dead center of the table. Cue ball's got lost a little there. David may play two rails. Yeah, nothing wrong with a little distance on the eight if he feels that's needed. And thought the cue ball was actually going to travel further, Carl. He wasn't so sure when he pulled the trigger, but it did fall. Just like in the previous rack, it was a safety aspect of nine ball what was let Great Britain down. Spain get a couple of rack lead now. Still early days, of course. But Spain, they're looking good. Yeah, Chris Melly just misjudged the kick shot. Literally missed it by a whisker. And just there, you see, he was just trying to glance off the left edge. Maybe got a little bit too cute, JJ. Yeah, maybe a little greedy. I think a soft kick on top of the one could have produced something that, you know, kind of slowed the Spaniards down. But I'll tell you the difference, and I found out this a long time ago on professional pool, is, is they grind out games. You know, you miss that safety by a little bit. David comes with a beautiful kick shot to put Britain in a, in a bad spot. They're not going to give an inch, so Great Britain has to recognize it's got to be their best. Yeah, you some guys from the Netherlands, Sky Woodward on the end. James from Australia, one of the players for Team Australia. I think they changed sides here. The fifth fret, the Spain to break, leading three. No, David's staying there. Maybe give it one last.
false choke. Well, now's the time for Great Britain. They really have to not only get out here, obviously, but and please stop it. keep control. The pool player's worst nightmare. Look at the cue ball. Doesn't park it, gets lost, and finds the drink. And Chris is going to have to make a nice shot here on the two down the rail. Past the side pocket. Now, Carl, you start out being a English eight ball player overall, right? I mean, that's not a shot you shoot an English eight ball down the rail, and certainly not in snooker. So, I mean, not growing up shooting that shot does it, is it a little more uncomfortable for you guys. Yeah, I think he probably for a lot of the nine ball play it's just always a bit weird because we've all hit that middle point haven't we and missed it so it's always a little bit scary yeah and i still have never figured out why you catch that middle point when the ball is just a playing cards width off the side rail like how's that happen but you know it's a shot that i was taught to work on every day whenever i was practicing pool many different ways and just become a lot more comfortable with it it seems but the snooker and English eight ball players, to me, it's just not something that they start out playing and could be a bit nervy. Well, we was getting a little bit of a feeling that Great Britain needed some help from Spain and help is what they got. They've made light work of this rack. And Great Britain to yeah. so just run behind. It's now three two. Bellin down there diagnosing some potential errors. Feels like they're not in a good rhythm. Is there taking too much time in between shots to talk to each other? One of the only things about the World Cup that makes it different from any other nine ball event. Got a buddy there with you. I looked at the rule book, you're allowed to talk about anything. You talk about whatever you want, but they insist on talking about pool every time. Okay, didn't bounce that much, so you should make it. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of nice listening to the boys discuss the rack, dissect it. The conversation always seems a little better when they've won the rack. Yeah, and I don't mind a little discussion as far as how to change something during the match. I mean, not a big change physically, but just like Raleigh said, a little less discussion on simple things. You know, there's going to be some rollouts and different things they're going to discuss. But overall, these guys know how to play and trying to develop a little bit more tempo and rhythm through the racks. Rack six. Great Britain trailing 3 2. Imran's gone to the left. Maybe because he's seen ball going from David. What's happening with a two ball? tell you does the World Cup change your decision I think in a regular tournament he plays the kiss shot on the two it's a pretty easy shot for these guys it is missable but not very difficult and I just kind of wonder if they play safe instead yeah and I know it's still it's be stages in the match but yeah when they played the A um, side it was all open yeah, table, clip off it. run the balls out. You can clip off it and go be in, but it's an easy kick. Two wraps yeah. lost. Okay, okay. Um, so far in this match. System. Just go for it now. Yeah, yeah. Where it's been. Yeah. feel like you go for it, go for this it. This type of play. Yeah. Is he going to go for the bank for that reason? I think so. 
Well, the bank's got to be cut a little extension. bit, and extension. he's got to draw the ball. I mean, you want to have a reward for position if you do make the bank. Magic Marin does it again, fires the bank in. Can we need another bank now to keep this going? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I thought he had to cut the one a little bit. That's why I was mentioning he had to draw the ball. It kind of just stunned it a little. And now Majid should, he's got to smooth it. A little top English. Is he playing safe? No. Well, that was actually an easier bank than what Chris was faced with. Like that. Played it the right way. Yeah, it's right controlling way. the yeah. object ball. Oh, I'm lucky there. Can I just screw it? Yeah, good bang. So there was the A. Well, there's a cluster of three balls down the bottom right. Extension. Extension. Spain will okay, try and get to maybe do something with them. Well, yeah, he's chipping off the left side of it. Okay, doesn't look like you can guarantee a good two ball. Could they play off it really thin? Just try and get the two ball near the nine. I know that's not the three balls. But this is touchy. I mean, you don't have a huge area to go between the three nine. I mean, it's plenty of room, of course, but maybe going for the bank. He is going for the bank. He's made the bank. What a shot! Is it a safety play? Perfecto. Well, that took a big bounce for me. He does have it, but man, that ball went a lot further. I thought he had it myself, but maybe not. Well, I'd put a little left spin on this, I think, before I jumped it myself, but easy to rattle this. Well, these rails have got a little bit bouncy out there. Even that's bounced quite big. All the fans sweating this match. I'll tell you that. It's livened up a little humidity in the room. Didn't cue that. Decelerated. That's why he nearly missed it, and that's why he's lost the cue ball. Yeah, and what happens when you decelerate? The back arm breaks down a little early. The tip goes up. Didn't get the draw on the ball he wanted and caught it thin. I'll tell you what, I may have to go for this cross, cross side here with a follow back to the end rail with the cue ball. You can't get the snooker right here. This team Spain really knows what they're doing. I mean... Yeah, just kind of got a bit lost with the shot clock there. It turned into a bit of a race to play the shot correctly. You could kind of feel him and wasn't ready to pull the trigger. And ironically, they talked about not so much discussion between the two games. And then right after the break, they discuss a lot. They discuss a lot right there and kind of got away from themselves a little bit. Yeah, well spotted. Very well spotted indeed, and that pot. Maybe this is a little touchy. Just purely because we've seen this rail be a bit lively. Spun the ball in with loads of right hand spin.
Team Spain. The battle continues here in the final quarter final. Thank you to Southern Frack. Team Spain to break. Leading by four rex to two. So Spain is still say, staying rather on that side of the table. Sanchez doesn't hold back. We've seen his break. And if we get a look at his right leg, you'll see it fly off the floor. He really drives through the break shot. Whole body goes into it. This looks like it's going to work. And work it is. Look at this. Yeah, this has got to be the scary outcome after a mistake in the last round. Misposition on, I wouldn't say a routine four ball for Milling, but one he should have handled. He, hand, he did make it, but wasn't the best of strokes. And now it's going to cost them multiple games, or it should. And you know, you just get a little bit of a different sense when Team Spain is talking to each other at the table. It feels much more collaborative. And why not? I mean, they've, they've been uh, drumming their competition so far. Yeah, he's got to hold this a little bit. Should be straight English, straight low. 
That's what holds the ball the best. Oof. Used a little bit of the rubber there, and I wasn't so convinced. He seemed a little bit more eased about it, but. He has a weird mannerism at the table, does Sanchez. You could just see it in the slow-mo. It sort of looks like he's moving on the shot, but it's actually quite a long time after this. Maybe, do you think that's because he knows he's not delivered the cue as nicely as possible? Yeah, that's generally what you see with the guys, and they know it as soon as they strike the ball, really. Just a little gut instinct, oh, it wasn't my best, but that's why you train, though. Try and create a little margin for error. Well, you saw it all over his face, a symphony of emotions cascading as he thought he missed that ball, but it might be, oh. First yeah. tester here. Yeah, that's extension in, place. At the interval, I'm running down to the arena. There's a little air conditioning unit, and every time we go down there, Chris and Imran come over, and we have a bit of a chat. And yeah, we were just discussing that left rail there. I feel like it's bouncing a bit, but no excuse for Spain there. Just leave the cue ball on the right rail. And Sanchez will make it. So now a little bit of a moment here in this match. We all know what a miss can do for the scoreline, so if he pots it, all is good. If he misses it, things can happen. Big shot coming up. It's in the heart of the pocket. Spins the cue ball three rails. 5-2 Spain. 5-2 Spain, quickly. Not a doubt on that nine ball. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz won the European Pool Championship in 2016. He hadn't won a matchroom event. He's been close, but he hasn't won a matchroom event until... win in nine ball pool does not matter really which event it is it's just difficult there you have it player one or excuse me the the, the round one seven one over australia seven one over albania semi-finalists in 2019 knocked out last year i believe it was it estonia that beat him last year maybe i can I think that's who it was. Roll is the stat man, JJ. It was Italy. Oh, Italy beat him 7 4. Okay. Only to lose to Denmark in the second round. The eighth break. Team Spain to break. Leading by five breaks to two. Still staying over to the left. It's working so far. The winning, so why change? Oh, the wind ball went in at ease. Oh, look at the one ball. Where's the two going to end up? Well, you couldn't put that better with yeah. your hand. This is jelly, that's for sure. And I really think the wing ball's fine from the right side. I mean, of course, you can't baby him, but I think possibly just not the, you know, unloading like Sanchez Ruiz, just that nice pop, I think, is a pretty consistent make for that corner ball. You do have to hit him hard, though. That is the rule. If you don't hit him hard enough, or if the referee, Marcel, doesn't think you hit him hard enough, he will scold you. And then if you do it again, I think that's a foul. Yeah, he, with the bridge, I don't know if he'll be really aggressive here trying to draw the ball back to get heavy on the two to just draw out of there for the three. You could easily clip off the the two and run the cue ball for a position on the three. Now no bridge, so. And now if you're a rook like me, I would think just hit the one ball wherever the two's right over the pocket. But uh, that's not the case, is it, Jeremy? No, I mean, he doesn't really want to go forward with the cue ball. I don't see any reason to do that, but he may just kind of stun outward a little bit. 
Because you can cheat the pocket on the two a number of ways Don't to gain a line for the cue ball. Yeah. Yeah, Francisco and David, they have played a little bit of snooker in the past, and the reason why I bring that up is because, obviously, in the game of snooker, you're going to use the bridge a lot more. Pretty much everyone else I've seen worldwide are, well, pretty horrendous with the bridge. Uh-oh. Okay, he's all right. Cheated the pocket there a little bit. And Getting a little excited there, JJ. Yeah, it's hard to tell sometimes. And the nerves are going for these two teams. Speaking of the bridge, Carl, there's some kind of disdain for the bridge in a lot of Americans. At one point, it was called the ladies' aid, the bridge. That's how, that's how much they hated to use it, but it seems like they've kind of adopted it a little more. The ladies aid. Yeah, I've never heard that one myself. Must be in the history books, I think. That's right. I am doing my homework. Pool doesn't often have a lot of homework, but this is it. Venga, medio. Okay, he needs a good speed if he's drawing the ball. Doesn't want to get on the wrong side of the seven with the eight up top. That's the difference in playing side pockets. Is you're going to have a little easier shot, but it can get you out of line with the cue ball quickly. Things can become very odd. If it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong here. It's all about getting as straight as possible. Yeah, I think he draws this right underneath the side where he's standing. Yeah, the table spreads so nice on that shot. You may not play that at your club table as much, but definitely on the slick table. And this is turning into a very healthy lead for Spain. GB are going to have to do something, do something fast. Otherwise, this match could be over. They're just looking so strong. Yeah, and it's been all about the seeds. Three seeds through. If Spain win, that will be four seeded teams to make the semi finals. The ninth break. Team Spain is leading the match by six breaks to two, and they will. like the ones down as well the two may not open up but i don't think they'll pass on this combo we'll see and i think very similar to what we saw at the uk open and all these winter break events the players are so good that you want to stay aggressive the safety right here it's an easy safety behind the eight, but also easy to maybe kick out of it. 
Yeah, you've seen the two break and runs come up on your screens, and that has all come after Chris didn't get in there in that sixth ball, so the timing of the break and runs has been perfect. Speaking of perfect, that combo on the 2-8, they made it look a lot easier than it was. We've seen a lot of blown combos this week. Yeah, and the thing about the winter break format is it goes right alongside the mistake column when it comes to the stats. That's how you make up for a few mistakes here and there, put a few racks together. Now, Carl, you hate the winter break format? Is that right? No, that is definitely not right. I love winter breaks. I hate alternate breaks. I thought you said you hated winter break. No, you've not been watching all season, really. I'm the one that's made it happen, buddy. No, I love winter breaks just because the mistake gets highlighted more. Jeez, I gotta change the uh, birthday cake. I got you then, because it says, Carl, happy birthday. I hope you never have to do another winter break again. Yeah, oh, again, that, that rail. <laughs> that rail, yeah. Extension yeah. call. What could make a rail bounce more? Springs? Okay then, ladies and gents, time to give those tickets away, and they must, they must go. They must go. So we've got a quick fire round now of questions. Now, 30 seconds to answer as many questions correctly, and you win these tickets. So, who wants to win these tickets then? We've had a couple of volunteers. You know what? These two are on a date over here, so you can come down. If you're on a date... Come and impress your date. Come down. No date. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Is that Skyler? No, thank you. This, you could be winning a lot more money than what I'm about to give away right now today. So, 30 seconds. Okay. And these two tickets are yours. If you can answer six questions or more. All right, then. We're going to start this timer uh, now. SVB's nickname. South Dakota kid, good. Chris Melling's nickname. You can say pass. A magician. Magician, correct. Current Moscone champs. Uh, Europe. How many teams started this tournament? 32. If you went to Haraz Resort in Atlantic City, what event would you be at? US Open. This guy's good. The value of the green ball? Six. Reigning world pool master, three, two, one. Uh, I'll give you the answer. No, no, I know, I know. Filler. Joshua Filler, the killer. Ladies and gentlemen, he smashed it out of the park. Let's give him a big round of applause. Two tickets to tomorrow. We'll see you there. The signed balls will be here tomorrow because the players need to sign them. This guy needs to sign the balls, yeah? All right, guys. We're getting back to the action now. Make some noise if you're supporting Great Britain. Let me hear you. Now let me hear if you're supporting Spain. Make some noise. Oh, my days. Here we go.
Thank you. It's rack number 10. 2022 World Cup of Tour. It's coming to an end. And Who is going to make that fourth semi-final? It's looking like Spain. It's going to need something big from Great Britain to turn this match around. Shot on the two, but the seven ball got right behind the cue ball, and they're going to be forced to try and roll at this, I believe. The three's handy by the side. It is playable. I think it's playable anyways. Yeah, it looks playable, and you don't figure a miss from Spain until the seven has crept behind the cue ball. It definitely makes it missable. They discuss discussing the cross corner bank here. The problem with the cross corner bank is if you make it, you're going up table with the cue ball, I think. I think I, think I would have Ruiz shoot at this. Yeah, I like that call, JJ. You took the words right out of my mouth. I think the season he's having and he's got a few decent balls this week. Have a go at it. Yeah, and he's not going to shoot it hard, obviously, but he's been shooting all the long shots with a lot of confidence. Yeah, and if he misses it, unless it stays over the hole, it's got a chance of just trickling back up onto the left rail. Yeah, and I think it's going to be the type of speed that it's going to be hard to sit over the hole. It's either going to go in or be hit poor enough to get away from the pocket. Or you hit it hard and miss it by a mile. Yeah, I was shocked that he put that much speed. I guess he was worried about getting snookered behind the nine. Now, can GB make something happen? Can they claw themselves back into this match? They've got to keep Spain off eight. The best comeback of the tournament was when Switzerland were 5 0 down to Hungary and they come back and won. Not seven. Now in playing the pot, but he's put it into the seven. Need some help from the five. And I think he's got it. Sorry. 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 Yeah, I think they can get a little to the two, but it really doesn't do much for him. So he's going to kick rail first, a little kick and stick. Should hit downward on the ball here. Oh, he's playing the make. What a shot. Yeah, what a brilliant shot that is from David Alcade. Look how far away the two ball is from the pocket. That's not over the pocket by any stretch. Yeah, and any time you have to aim you know, a diamond and a half up from where the object ball is at, that's real first you kind of stay away from, but these guys are feeling it. Yeah, and because the cue ball's finished on that rail. Is he playing it off the six? Wow. Okay, that's the only thing that made sense to me when he elevated the cue. Just kind of let up on it. That's why he got a little follow. Well, they're not landing perfect on these balls, but they are making shots. Shooting lights out here. Seven to two ahead. That's got to get a little extra confidence to calm you down. Not that much straighter. Good safety player is David. He really is. He impressed us all at the Moscone Cup training camp that we had. And he's laid a good one there. Yeah, and I think the eight's impeding the kick here. He's got to come to the other rail, it appears. 
He really wants to kick like a standard shot trying to come up behind this five ball. He's got to hit before five that seconds, side Steve. pocket. Extension. Extension. The only problem is the eight's kind of covering up the escape of the purple going up table, so. Difficult for Emron. He could foul going above the eight right there. He could catch the eight coming downward. That Imran made contact, and he did make your opponents come with a shot of some sort. Well, Ruiz, right here in the London area, has made all these, starting with the UK Open, has made all these tough ones. Yeah, the UK Open just a few weeks ago when Sanchez lost in the final to Filler. Sanchez Ruiz lost his very first match of the event. And he went on a crazy run to reach that final. Yeah, he has absolutely been on fire recently. He was in the 2022 Masters. He took down Mika Imanen and Albin Ocean before finally succumbing to Misio Fortunski of Poland, the final eight. Barry's another one. Man, Team Spain is really looking strong out there. Yeah. And, well, we'll see a, a stat here. 68 to 18 on balls haunted for these two teams. And that could be a big difference if Britain could just have had a few shots back and gotten something going. But so far in this event, no other team looks more like not to be denied than Spain. Spain on the hill. The writing looks on the wall, doesn't it? Before this match, we just felt GB would need to up their game. Unfortunately, it just hasn't happened. This was the chance. David first made his debut at the Moscone Cup. Another Moscone debutante was the two of them squared off against Johnny Archer and Earl Strickland and won. So once teammates, now opponents, and it looks like David's gonna get the better of them. Anyone remember who won the 2006 Moscone Cup? Thank you, the 11th right? Was that nobody? Nobody. It was the only tie there's ever been. A tie in the Moscone Cup. It seems unfathomable. Trick questions in all kinds of sports. Who won the 94 World Series? No one. That was a strike season. <laughs> I think I, I really believe Montreal would have won it that year myself, but former Expos, now the Washington Nationals. I think I'll stay out of that combo, JJ. I think you need Phil Yates for this one. Yeah. I might stay away from it with Phil. Feel a little rookie-ish. All right, I think they go here. 
Too easy of a bank to not try and produce position on the two. Bank shots there, needs the cue ball to slow a little. Needs it to slow. Well, it has done. Suppose potting this ball and just going over to whereabouts, whereabouts he's putting his cue. This would. Oh, this is a good chance for the match now, isn't it? Just pot this ball. You feel like you're gonna get on the three. The only thing that could maybe go wrong is it's a little hard and it runs over towards the green six. You know, this team's been too solid, and David made a sweet, smart choice on the one. Committed to the one ball bank a little more than the cue ball, and I thought that was a good decision. Knowing his partner can handle a lot. And a little flick of left English down to the bottom rail, five in the opposite side, and the Spaniards will be getting some early dinner, it looks like. Just gotta, just gotta pinch the cue ball a little bit here. He's close enough to it. Should be easy. Paella for you, Frank. Solid performance from the Spaniards. The best of buddies. <laughs> 